So the question becomes then, how do we do that? How do we, as a body of believers, truly live united? One of the most important and most difficult parts of coaching soccer. Now, I have not coached any other sports, so I don't know anything about coaching other sports. I just have experience with soccer, but I imagine this relates to other sports as well. One of the most difficult things about coaching soccer is teaching kids to stay in their lanes. This person right here, who's a midfielder, should not cross this line. Same with these guys. Same with this guy. There should be lanes right here. And they all can run up and down the field, but they all need to stay in their lanes. And a problem occurs because for their entire lives, they have had the mantra, chase the ball, get the ball, score. And so this person over here, who is supposed to stay in this lane, you know what they end up doing? They end up chasing the ball all the way over here. And then all the way back here, and then all the way up here, and then all the way over here, and then all the way down here. And what happens is, by the time the ball gets over here, which it will, they're exhausted. They are wiped. They have no energy to get the ball when it's in their spot and take it down the field. And so we preach and we preach and we preach, stay in your lanes. Stay in your lanes. Don't chase the ball. Stay where you're supposed to be. Move up and down the field in your lanes. Because when they stay out of their lanes, they miss opportunities when the ball comes where it's supposed to. Listen. Far too often in our faith, we miss some incredible opportunities that God has placed before us because we have exhausted ourselves chasing things God never intended us to chase. Far too often in our faith, we miss incredible opportunities that God has prepared us for, that he is placing before us, that, that he has set up for this moment in time. And we miss those opportunities because we have exhausted ourselves chasing things we were never supposed to chase. You want to know how we be united? We stay in our lanes. And staying in our lanes means this. It means that we don't have to agree on everything. We don't. We're not going to agree on everything, and that's okay. But it does mean this. We agree on the main thing. The main thing being this. God loves you. Jesus came and died to save you, and it's God's love that changes people. When it comes down to it, that's the core. God loves you. Jesus came and died to save you, and it's God's love that changes people. And so often, so often, we start chasing things God never intended us to chase. We post our opinions on social media and, and we shout the loudest and, and we feel like we have to fight to prove our point because we have to be right. Because if we're not right, then something is wrong. And so we throw it out and we chase this opinion, we chase that opinion, and we go and we run after this and we run after that. And listen, those are great opinions to have. But they're just not in our lanes. Our lane is God loves you. Jesus came and died to save you and it's God's love that changes people. My arguments are not going to change your mind. And so what happens is God has set us up for this moment where our lives are going to intersect with this other person and we have this incredible opportunity to show this other person the love of Christ. But we have been chasing and fighting and arguing and throwing our opinions out there. But that by the time that this person starts to come into our life, this moment that God has set up, one of two things happens. One, we are exhausted. We're, we are just We've wiped ourselves out chasing things we were never supposed to chase. Or two, we have chased so many things we're not supposed to chase that that person comes into our life and they're like, mm, I don't know that they really want to show me the love of God. 
And so it's vitally important. It's vitally important that we stay in our lanes. That when we speak, we speak the love of God. It's okay to disagree. But guess what? If I disagree with you, if I disagree with the person that I meet out on the street, I'm disagreeing and I'm showing them love. I'm showing them the love of Christ because I'm going to stay in my lane and know that it's not me or my argument that's going to change people. It's God's love that's going to change people. And so we have to stay in our lanes. If we're going to be united, we have to stay in our lanes. But the second thing that we have to do is we have to play our positions. We have to play our positions. Each person on this soccer field has a different position. And guess what? They all play that position completely differently. The defenders, their main goal is to guard the goal. They're not going to cross this line. And when they get the ball, they're going to boot it down the field. The midfielders, they have crazy endurance. They have to run all the way up the field and all the way down the field. These three guys right here are runners. They also have great ball control and they pass the ball really well. They're always looking to be intentional about moving the ball down the field. And these guys, the forwards, they're going to spend most of their time up here. And they are crazy about charging the goal. And they have great powerful shots. I don't want this guy to play like this guy. I don't want this guy to play like this guy. And I certainly don't want any of these guys to play like the goalie who's allowed to use their hands. Because you're not supposed to use your hands in soccer. Listen, God has given you a position in this thing called life. And it's called spiritual gifts. And I get really, really excited when I start talking about spiritual gifts because... um, I think we've narrowed what spiritual gifts are. And I think God intended us to have some incredible gifts that we just don't know are gifts. See, here's what I mean. God has given you gifts, talents, abilities, passions to be used for his kingdom. He's given you specific gifts, talents, and abilities that the person two rows behind you, two rows in front of you does not have. And when you use those gifts, talents, abilities, and passions, your life begins to intersect with other people with those exact same gifts, talents, abilities, and passions. And you get the opportunity to show them the love of Christ. If you are a fisherman, you know what you do? You fish. And you become an awesome, fantastic, great fisherman. And you know what? Because you love to fish and you are such a great fisherman, your life is going to intersect with other fishermen. If you love to create art, you go and you create art. If you love music, you go and you make music and you perfect that art and you do it to the best of your ability. And you will naturally begin to gather around you other people that love art and love music and your life is going to intersect with them and you have this incredible opportunity to show them the love of Christ. If you love to do sports... You perfect that sport that you're in. You work hard at it. And you impact the people on your team so that you can show them the love of Christ. If you love to play video games, guess what? Video games, I know this is going to sound crazy. I'm a firm believer. That's a gift from God. Now, now hear me out. Hear me out. Because I know some of you are thinking this is ridiculous. Now, granted, there needs to be balance in all of these gifts. Like, if, if you are fishing or playing music or playing video games and completely ignoring the rest of your life, that's probably not a good thing. There has to be balance. But, but listen, I don't play Fortnite and I don't play Minecraft. But I know there's a group of people sitting right over here that do play Fortnite and Minecraft. And guess what? They are interacting with people through their online streaming services that I have no idea how it all works, but they can connect switches together and play online together. They're interacting with people you and I will never interact with. Just won't happen. And through that, they have an opportunity to express the love of Christ through a screen. And, and for us, that kind of blows our mind. Like, Video games, spiritual gifts, 
ridiculous, right? But, but here's the important part about playing our positions is that we play our positions and we allow other people to play their positions. And so often we have taken spiritual gifts and we have limited them down to this particular number of spiritual gifts. And we say, if you're not in this group, if you don't fit into this category, well, you better like become more like some of the people in this category. And I'm convinced that that is not what God intended. God intended each of us to play our own position and to be our own people who go out and intersect with other people that also play those positions and go out and show them the love of Christ. And we are united. We are united. Not when we all look the same. Not when we all interact the same. But when we play our own positions and we allow others to play their positions as well. And in the midst of that, we go out and we impact thousands more people than we would ever impact by doing it all the same way. If we want to live united, we have to stay in our lanes. We have to play our positions. And the third thing we have to do is we have to love. We have to love. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 2 again because this is incredible. I want you guys to look through this through the lens of how the church loved. It says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and all came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. Now check this out. Check out this incredible love. They were selling their possessions and belongings. They were distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, they were attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes. They were having people over for meals. They received their food with glad and generous hearts and praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day, those who were being saved. Here's the truth. It's love. It is the love of God that changes people. You'll notice people were in awe of how the early church was living. They were in awe. Not because the early church, yes, they were preaching and they were sharing a message that was incredible and absolutely believable. But along with that message... There was this incredible love. They cared about people. And they showed them this this just unwavering love. In John chapter 17, going back again to the night that Jesus was to be crucified, he is sitting at dinner with his disciples and he says this. He says, A new commandment I give you, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. By this, all people will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. It's God's love. It's God's love that changes people. And the early church went out and they showed this incredible love. And it's, it's this beautiful thing because there's a group of people sitting over here that don't look like them, don't act like them, don't believe the same things as them. And the early church was showing such incredible love to the people that didn't look act or believe the same way they did, that the people over here said, wow, that's odd. Like, I don't believe the same things they do. I don't live my life the way they do. But I'm so loved, like I'm, I'm compelled to be a part of this group. Isn't that what we want? There's this really cool thing that my wife does. She's awesome at it. She gathers her soccer team around before every single practice and before every single game. And she has one message and it's kind of the team mantra. 
She says this. She said, what did you say today when you stepped on the field? Well, she kind of gets down on their level. What did you say today when you stepped out on the field? And all the team says, I belong. I belong. Because the truth of the matter is, the thing we want each and every one of those kids that play soccer for us to know is that whether they have played soccer never ever or they've played for 10 years, they belong on this team and they belong on this field. There's no room for tearing each other down. There's no room for ripping each other apart. They belong here. Here's the truth. Jesus looks at every single person your life intersects with. Whether that's in person or online. And he says, oh, my child, you belong. You belong here. You belong with me. I I want you to be a part of this. And I have to apologize because too often I have shared the message and we as a church have shared the message that if, if you're part of that group that doesn't believe, you don't belong and the truth is you belong you belong and you guys we got to go out we got to recognize that it is the love of Jesus Christ that changes people Jesus said a new commandment I give you they will know you are my followers by the way that you love one another it's the love of Jesus Christ that changes people and when our lives intersect we've got to say listen you belong We may not agree, but you belong in Jesus Christ. And it's his love that's going to come alongside them and it's going to radically change their lives. If we want to live united, we have to stay in our lanes. We have to play our positions. And we have to show love. Here's the cool thing that I think is awesome. Working with with students, middle school, high school, college age. I see this happening. I see this changing. I see this current moving in our culture where where God is using them and God is using you and and God is changing the culture where, where he is just drawing people to himself. And it's this absolutely incredible thing when we can live united. We will make a huge difference. Imagine with me for just a moment. If just the people in this room, just the people sitting in this room, just the people watching online, if if we all made a commitment, I'm going out here and I'm living united. You know what would happen? Brazil would never be the same. You know what would happen? The restaurants that you go to after church to go eat, they would never be the same. Waiters and waitresses would have a different opinion of the people that they're serving. Our schools would never be the same. Our workplaces would never be the same. And it would be this radical, incredible change where God's kingdom community lives united and people are just like, I got to be a part of that. I I don't know why, um, I don't understand it, but I have to be a part of that. So I want to encourage us, let's, let's go live united. Every week I speak to students, I try to give them a really practical challenge. Like they've, they've sat and they've watched what happened on the stage and they've kind of absorbed it. And I want them to be able to walk out the doors and say, okay, here's my next step. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what the step that I'm taking to know that if I want to take another step in my faith, this is what I'm going to go do. And so I want to give you a practical challenge as well where you say, all right, this is my next step. I want you to pick one of the three things that we talked about today where we're going to live united. I want you to work on that. What is it? What's the one thing you need to work on most? Now, it's easy to pick the one and say, yeah, I'm going to work on that one because I'm already good at that one. But what's the one you need to work on most? Maybe it's staying in your lane. Maybe you find yourself just chasing all kinds of arguments and you need to say, all right, right, I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm I'm done chasing arguments. I'm done shouting opinions. 
I'm staying in my lane. God loves you. Jesus died for you. It's God's love that changes people. Maybe that's you. Maybe for you, it's this idea that you're going to play your position. You're like, wow, I never thought that what I do could be a spiritual gift. And like it opens up so many avenues. It opens up so many doors. I can go out and I can do that and I can succeed in that and not feel guilty about that. And I can show people God's love and he's using me to change God's kingdom. And go out and just do it. And maybe you just need to show love. Maybe you just you struggle a little bit. What I want to encourage you to do, if you want to take this one step in your faith, as you walk out these doors, I want you to pick the one that you struggle with most and I want you to work on it. I want you to tell someone, someone that's going to be able to hold you accountable and say, hey, I really need to work on this. Help me. You know, if, if you see me being unkind, unloving, call me on it. If you see me chasing other opinions, call me on it. If you see me shying back from the things that I'm good at, man, encourage me to step up and take the lead and go do it. What's the one thing? This week, pick that one thing. Tell someone about it. Start working on it. Because, guys, I see God moving. I see his kingdom being united. I see a wave coming. And God is using us to change his kingdom. So let's go do it. Let me pray for you. God, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for using us, for trusting us enough to be a part of your story. That you would use us to change people's lives, to draw them in to your love that they are so longing for. God, I pray that as we go from here, that you would use us and that we would be people that go out and live united and change this world for your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.